Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Manchester United draw 3-3 with Galatasaray and effectively are probably heading out of the Champions League. Look, I, I make no apologies for this. Um, th th sometimes you've got to say it, that's on the manager. And, and it's not, you know what, interestingly, it's not actually just the goalkeeper. Now that I've had two minutes to just storm around my house and try and calm down, the goalkeeper has completely screwed us today, 100%. And you've got to look at Ten Hag for that as much as you've got to look at the goalkeeper. But also, I'm, I'm going to call out people like McTominay. I'm going to call out people in the defence for kick, kick, kicking long balls for an hour. We could have won that game 8-0. I don't understand how we've played Galatasaray home and away and taken one point from six. They literally play with a front six and a back four. They, they, they give you so much space. Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal would hit double figures against Galatasaray. All you've got to do is play through a very simple press and you've got four or five against their back four. It's just a simple case of pass, pass, pass. And we can't, we couldn't do it at Old Trafford and we couldn't do it here. I'm, I'm, I'm fuming. I'm abs how, how have we messed up this group? It was so bloody easy and we've messed it up. But look, um... I, 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 you know, we've won that game. We've won that game of football. Three goals, three good goals. We've won that game of football. We, I think we should have scored another three, but we've won that goal. We've won that game. We've won that game at 1-0. How we've conspired to draw a game having scored three goals is incredible. And look, I, I, think, I think we beat about the bush a little bit here. I'm just going to say it straight. I said it in February. I couldn't move on Twitter, and it was called Twitter there, because people were compiling clips of David De Gea. This is why De Gea's got to go. This is why De Gea's got to go. Look at the way he's kicking the ball into touch. Look at the way he's passing the ball there. 17 clean sheets. Countless good performances. We've got to get rid of De Gea. We've got to get rid of De Gea. We've got to get rid of De Gea. Well, every person who said that looks like a turbo prat now, because you've got a ball-playing goalkeeper it was Costa's Champions League football. Simple as that. Simple as that. David De Gea should have been kept for another year. We don't even play out from the fucking back. We bought a ball-playing goalkeeper, which some people in our fan base were obsessed with. We need a ball-playing goalkeeper. We need a ball-playing goalkeeper. We don't even play with the ball. What's the point in having a ball-playing goalkeeper when you don't play with the ball? We don't play out from the back. We need a ball playing goalkeeper. We don't play out from the back. It, 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 it's, it, it's just that simple. And we've what, we, what we've actually done is, and I can't believe I'm saying this, what we actually did is we got rid of a goalkeeper for free to replace him with a worse goalkeeper for 50 million quid. That's what we did. We let a goalkeeper go that's better than the current one and we paid 50 million quid to do it because we thought we were going to play out from the back. I could have told you for free we wouldn't be playing out from the fucking back. We don't know how to do it. If we could pass the ball, we'd have won the game 8-0 tonight. Why have we bought a ball playing goalkeeper when we can't bloody... It's like buying a bloody dartboard for Stevie Wonder. It's a waste of time. Ball playing goalkeeper in a team that can't pass the fucking ball. It's incredible. And I tell you what, I like Anana. I do. I thought, you know, I've always liked Anana. But I did say, don't fucking do it. Don't get rid of David De Gea. It's not broken. It's not a problem. Don't do it. And we've done it. And I tell you what, I back Eric Ten Hag. You know I do. I want Ten Hag to stay, but he has to take the blame as well. If we had David De Gea in goal for the Champions League that he qualified us for, we'd be through. You know how many goals we've conceded in the Champions League in five games? 14 bloody goals in five games. 14 goals in five games. That's nearly three goals a game. And we kept a clean sheet in one of them. We're better off without Varane though. But look, no, it's about the goalkeeper. 14 goals in fucking five games. David De Gea qualified us for the Champions League. If David De Gea was in goal, we'd be into the group stage a piece of piss. You can't blame any defender today for that. No defender should be getting into trouble for that. Every goal is on the keeper. The first one is a, is a bloody... It's like being at the pantomime. He may as well 
have got, in fact, uh, some people would say he should do. You know, Dick Whittington, and that's not because he's a dick. I'm not saying that. Dick Whittington, he's got that stick with a, with a bloody sandwich in it, and he's off to bloody London. He may as well have been dressed as Dick Whittington, because that was pantomime on the first goal. Put the wall, let the Galatasaray players move out the way, and I'll save it. Oh, I've moved out the way. Oh, what am I doing? Second goal, free kick. Oh, I could have fucking cleared that. I could have cleared that. It's a cross straight at him. Just kick the fucking ball if you can't catch it. Third goal, how's he getting beat on his front post from there? I I don't know. And look, it's harsh to say it. And I will, I will be fair. I'm really pissed off. I don't understand why we did this in the goal. But... He, I, I wouldn't drop him against Newcastle. You've got to stick by him. I've seen it with Bartes. I've seen it with Bosnich. I've seen it all before. This is why I said don't get rid of De Gea because I've seen it all before. But if we're being completely blunt, the reason we're out of the Champions League or the reason we're looking like we're out of the Champions League is because of the goalkeeper. He's been crap in the Champions League and I just, I just, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed because we should have won that game. We've literally gifted Galatasaray. You take away those gifts, where's the chance? Where's the, where, where's the goal they're going to score? I, I just don't know. Average 10 hard game scores, then tells the player to go long. Concede, says Jake. I'm going to talk about that next. Anana must be a plant. Whenever we look decent in the Champions League, he starts throwing them in, says Kevin. I can see Galatasaray losing in Denmark. They're not a great team. We will have to win versus Bayern, says Rohit. Yeah, look, look we've got a chance. We've got a chance. But, you know, we shouldn't be in this position. We don't have a midfield. We're the ideal team for Galatasaray. Regardless of the manager, the midfield seems to be a blind spot. It's the Bermuda Triangle, says Zero Connection. And average Ten Hag gave done that one. Um, United needs to sack Anana and United Stan needs to get rid of Beth, says Ezzy. No, look, Beth's not the only one who wanted to get rid of De Gea. I, 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 you know, I'm just saying I don't think we should have done it. 50 million to get rid of De Gea for Inanna. Him and Mount got to go in the summer already. And Anthony, what a joke. Anthony played well, Joseph. Come on. Let's not start jumping on people because you've got an agenda. Anthony, I thought, played well. If we just look deeper than the keeper for a second, that's how you play in the Europe and get a result. We lack so much composure, says Nick P. And I don't want to see Anana or McTominay playing again this season, says Sean. Uh, it might seem extreme, but they are both awful and other players would be dropped for their performances, says Sean. Anana is a mess, says Mojo. Mate, look, you know what? I've said, I've said it about the keeper. We're going to do the player ratings in a minute. I've said it about the goalkeeper, but can I just say as well, you're absolutely correct about McTominay, Sean. He scores a goal, so he'll live off that for a few more games. He's been invisible. As I said at half-time, he's sponsored by Halloween. He's ghosting. He ghosts through games. That goal he scored was a piece of piss. It comes from Anthony and wan and he's in the box. He, he will sprint when he's in the box, but he won't sprint to defend his own crap passes, which cost us the second goal. He is the invisible man. Like, we're not dominating the midfield because McTominay's in it. And he, and he gets away with it because he pops up with goals. But we're Manchester United. We can't just have a player that makes runs into the box. He's got to tackle. He's got to pass. You know, he's got to inspire. He is a passenger in that team, but he keeps popping up for goals. And that's... Some people will say, well, that's enough for me, Mark. That's fine. I want more. I don't... And also, he scored a goal. He should have scored fucking three more. We're 3-3. Three, three. He's running at the back four. We've got a 2v3. He shoots from 30 yards when he can slip Martial in. Like, decision-making again. It's, um, it's, and, and also another thing as well. Another thing as well. We've scored three goals and everyone's going to blame Anana. But as I come down a little bit here, let's call it for what it is. We should have scored seven or eight. Pelestri missed a chance at the end. How many times did we get to the edge of their penalty box and misplace a pass or take a shot when we shouldn't have done? We scored three. We should have scored seven. If I was Ten Hag, I'd be very unhappy with the goalkeeper, but I'd also be very unhappy with the attack. I'd be saying, we really should have scored seven or eight. There was so much space and there was so much space at Old Trafford. And why are our centre-backs constantly whacking long balls against the team that if you dink it beyond their midfield, you've got 4v3 or 5v4 and we're hitting bloody long balls. Why are we hitting long balls against the team that's playing a back four and a front six? We should be playing through the press. Keep the fucking ball on the ground and we're hitting bloody long balls. I don't get it. Maguire and Lindelof love a fucking long ball. We haven't got the players for long balls. Did somebody tell them that Rashford suspended? At least when you've got Rashford, you've got that pace. We haven't got that. So, you know what? There's, 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 
It's a catalogue of errors. You know, it's not just one cow shit on the field. It's like a, it's like we've said before, it's like a field full of cows that have been drinking pints of laxatives. laxatives. It's shit everywhere. I just can't believe we've drawn that game. Pep Guardiola, if he watched that, he'd be laughing his head off. He'd be going, how have they drawn that game? 99 times out of 100, you'd win that game and you'd win it 5 or 6 nil. It's, it's just ridiculous. And you know what? It's got absolutely nothing to do with why we lost. But why the fuck is he picking McTominay and not pick... And, you know, why is he picking McTominay in the midfield? Why is Varane still sat on the bench? I mean, some of the decisions are just weird. And when you're winning, you get away with it. But when you're not winning, people start to scrutinise bad decisions. The De Gea for Anana thing is reckless. It's ridiculous. Why have you fallen out with Varane? He's way better than Lindelof. You know, that we, we're also, you know what, we're also forgetting as well. That offside on an, on, on Icardi was, was literally that. McTominay hand, hand, handballed it as well. Like, we could have conceded another two goals. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I'm not, I'm not surprised. The bottom line is I'm not surprised, but I'm so pissed off. I'm just so pissed off. It's, it's, you know what it is? It's composure. It's composure. As per usual, it's composure. We lose our head more than Henry VIII wives do. It's, 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 just, it's just composure. Henry VIII FC, I've said it before. It's just composure. It's concentration. We, were, we, were, we, we, we weren't 3-0 up, but we were 2-0 up and 3-1 up. And we've ended up 3-3. We've had a two-goal lead twice and we've drawn the game. Even when they equalised... We've still got 15 minutes to just show a bit of composure. And we shit ourselves. And you know what? If they come out and say we're unlucky, they can fucking do one. We're not unlucky. It's not a coincidence when you continually blow leads and, and score, concede crap goals. We're not lucky. And I, you know what? If I was Varane, if I was Varane and Ten Hag says, uh, guess what? You're in the team for Anfield. I'd go, oh, Hamstring's gone. I would I would not want to be back in that team for Anfield because we will get battered. We are going to get battered at Anfield. We are absolutely going to get Christmas turkey stuffed. You know it. You know it. If, if we're giving up goals like that against Galatasaray, imagine what's going to happen at Anfield when they score an early goal. I, I, I You know what? We're just... We're in a right fucking state. And, and what's the future? What is the future? I look at the I look at the I look at the group, right? I look at the group. We're bottom with four points. We could be third from bottom if Copenhagen lose badly to Bayern Munich. We've got to beat Bayern Munich to get to seven points and hope that Galatasaray don't beat Copenhagen. Oh, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're like an antelope surrounded by lions. We haven't got a bloody hope. We're dead. And we deserve to be. The thing is, we deserve to be. We've got, what have got, we got? Four points from five games. If we just look deeper than the keeper for a second, that's not how you play in Europe, says Nick P. Uh, we lack so much composure. We're finally scoring goals after a terrible drought and now our keeper is letting everything in, says Ivan. Uh, Rob Lynn, thank you. Welcome to Members Club. Anana and not finishing up front is what's costing us the Champions League, uh, says Eddie. What was taking off Ganacho for? Still shoot out the box. Anthony played well today, says Kirk. Europe is effectively over. Time to focus on top four in the FA Cup, says Tim. You jump on people when they scapegoat, i.e. with Anthony, but you do the same with McTominay even when he doesn't have a bad game, says all right, yeah. I mean, I don't jump on anybody. I don't jump on anybody. And I don't know what you're talking about, Anthony, because I thought Anthony had a good game. I've said for weeks, I think McTominay is ghosting and I think he ghosts every week. But if you don't, you've just expressed an opinion. That's fine. McTominay might get 10 out of 10. I just think he's not good enough. I think he's a ghost. I don't I don't think he offers anything to the team apart from goals every now and again, which some people will say is enough. It's an opinion. There's people out there that will think McTominay's man of the match. I'm fine with that. It's my opinion. I, deal with it. Bloody weak back line with a useless striker. Do not get me started on Anana, says Ikshan. And um, 
Those moments that make a difference are all about composure. McTominay deciding to shoot, not pass. It's quality and decision-making, says Nick P. Liverpool is going to make love to us in Anfield, says Laberm. And Ten Hag is just bad at transfer windows. Very bad. Mount, Anthony and Arna, says Space. But Anthony played well tonight. Hoyland's a good signing. Casemiro was a good signing. Eriksen was a good signing. Um, Martinez was a good signing. Like, you know, let's not, let's not turn this into Ten Hag out. We didn't even bloody lose. But complaining about not scoring six or six or more to make sure we win is sad. Some chances are taken and some are missed. Three goals should be enough to win. I agree, LJ. They should be enough to win. But it was 3-3 with 15 minutes to go. You don't just go, well, three should have been enough to win. We, we, there was so much space in the last 10 minutes. We, just, it's like Nick P said. Composure in the last 10 minutes and we win that game. Uh, what if Bayern lose tonight, says Regine? Look, we need a bloody miracle. We need a miracle and we shouldn't be in this uh, we shouldn't be in this position where we need that miracle. I mean, I'm interested to see what they're going to say on the forum because I just think that David De Gea earned his Champions League football, deserved the right to be our goalkeeper this year. And the reason we're going out is because of the goalkeeper. You know, it's as simple as that. Um, you know, I've, I've even put it, Anana to blame. He's, he's been a bloody... But in defence of Anana, what do you bloody expect? This is the biggest thing. I'm starting to calm down a bit. What did you expect? I said this in March and a lot of you said it as well. I'm old enough to remember what happens when you replace a Schmeichel or a Van der Sar. It doesn't instantly go well. And, it, and, and you don't instantly get the right goalkeeper. But people were like, let's replace a legend goalkeeper with a ball playing goalkeeper and we'll instantly be better. And I was like, they're going to learn the hard way here. Every time I've seen this in my life, it's, it's gone wrong. It takes time. It took time for De Gea when he first came to the club. It takes time. It took time for Schmeichel at the start. It takes time. And nobody seemed to tell Ten Hag this. Nobody seemed to tell Ten Hag that being the goalkeeper of Manchester United isn't an easy transition. Even if you pick the right goalkeeper, there'll be clangers, there'll be mistakes, it'll cost you points. It's cost us Champions League football. I think Anana could still be a really good goalkeeper for Manchester United. I'm doubting it more and more by the game, if I'm being completely honest, and I, you know I'll be honest with you. I want Anana to be a success. He still could be a success. If I'm being honest, from some of the conversations I've had from people in the know, they've said, I don't think he will be. But that's for them to say, not for me. Bottom line, he could be a success as a goalkeeper. But he's done exactly what I thought would happen. Pressure. At Manchester United, new goalkeeper, mistakes, losses. I could see it a mile off, but some people didn't want to listen. They thought we were going to replace a really good goalkeeper and a new goalkeeper would come in and be better than the good goalkeeper. And it, it was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. It wasn't even a prediction. I knew there would be an adjustment period. And that adjustment period, unfortunately, is bye-bye Champions League. And if I tell you what, what we're not talking about here, let me name a few other players. If I was Bruno Fernandes, if I was Marcus Rashford, I'd be looking at that and going, I'm not playing Champions League football in February because of that fucking keeper. You might, you, you probably what you probably got his back because he's, he's a teammate, but I'd be going, we're literally not playing Champions League football because the manager's changed the goalkeeper. Um but we've got, you know, we are where we are. And for people saying, I hope we don't get into the Europa League, let me remind you what I said last night. If we don't get Europa League football, we're screwed. We can't afford not to be in Europe in February. It will cost us tens of millions of pounds. We have to be in Europe until at least April because it's factored into our finances. It costs us money. It's revenue. Financial fair play is a thing. Revenue comes from things like being in Europe. You can't have the luxury of going, oh, it'd be nice to focus on the top four. We need to be in Europe. It's not a nice to have. We need to be in Europe. So I would be bloody praying that we get a miracle against Bayern Munich. And if we don't, I'd be bloody praying that we get in the Europa League because we need the money. We're in a shit position financially. This is not... This is not good for Ten Hag, actually. This is not good. If you're Sir Jim Radcliffe, you, you might be looking at this and going, 
you know, you've got to, you've got to look at the manager here. Why, why are we going out of the Champions League? Uh, Vengeance says De Gea was on 370k a week at Foot Plus Golden Glove. Anana is 50 million plus 100k. Do the math. Blame is just not on Ten Hag. It's the weird management pressure from the top, says Vengeance. Well, that needs to be leaked out then. I'm done with Anana. Too many stupid mistakes. We should give Bienda his chance. Well, he will get it in January, the bake. And please, Mark, stop. I follow Inter since years. This guy was always a terrible shot stopper. Why didn't we get the young Portuguese keeper, Costa, who was also national team no uh, number one? Eric Ten Hag bringing ex-players in, says Vita. There we go. Right, let's do the player ratings because uh, I, I know they're ready to go on the forum and I know they've got a lot to say. Um... Yeah, you know what? I'm just, I'm just, I'm actually. Anybody who's watched the United Stand for a long time will know that this frustration is because I'm devastated. I'm absolutely devastated. I, I could, I, I could not bring myself to watch that game back if I tried. I really couldn't. I'm absolutely devastated by that. I cannot believe it was bad enough. You know, before I do the player ratings, it was bad. I watch a lot of football. I'm sure you watch a lot of football. From a purely tactical point of view, I don't know how we lost the Galatasaray at Old Trafford. There's so much space. There's so much space. And I'm like, I don't know how we lost. That's That's got to be a one-off. And then we play them at their ground and there's loads of space again. I don't know how we've not beaten them in two games where they've played so open. And also, they make it 3-3 with 15 minutes to go and they still try and win it. And I'm like, they're bloody thick. Why are they why are they not try no they scored their third goal with 20 minutes to go and they still left loads of space if i was galatasaray at 3-3 i'd shut up shop a point's great for them and they still tried to win it they still left it open and we still couldn't fucking do it unbelievable uh, De Gea deserved to play in the Champions League more than anyone, says GP. Thank you very much for your super chat there. What use is a midfielder who scores sometimes and does nothing else when that's not his job? McTominay is a useless midfielder and a championship striker. He won't even make the bench of any top team, says Zeem. Um, please um, also, uh, why have we what factored in European football then? By the way, let's not forget Anana has played all right in the Premier League recently, says KF. Oh, that's all right then. That's all right then. You know, it's like someone who shits all over your kitchen and then you go, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Last week he did do it in the toilet. Right. Anana. You know, it's got to be low too. I mean, it has to be low. It's got to be low. Yeah, look at that. Turkish Delight. I'm surprised I haven't seen that sooner. Turkish Delight from Cameron when it should have been a turkey stuffing. Uh, had enough of an honor. They The way he catches the ball and makes saves are really dodgy. No commanding presence at all, says Fadzel. I mean, he's got he's got he's got terrible handling skills from what I've seen this season. Eric Ten Hag wanted Kim Min Joy and the boy the board messed it up. Another manager failing under this board, says Ben. I mean, I, look, I, I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that with Ten Hag. I mean, look, Ten Hag out thing is a joke. You, I don't even know how you could be Ten Hag in before the game and Ten Hag out after the game. Like, the, the keeper has cost us that. Uh, wan I thought was okay. He kept Zahar quite quiet. I, I'd give uh, wan a six. Maguire was okay. You know, Akadi was kept quiet. I thought Maguire was okay. Six. Lindelof, I'd probably give him a 5.5. I think that, you know, he looked a bit off it tonight, to be fair. Um, look, why we're not picking Varane, I don't know. That's, you've got to look at Ten Hag for that. Luke Shaw, um, I thought he had a good game. Six for me. Amrabat, I actually thought had a good game. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know why he's getting so much shit. I thought Amrabat did okay. Six. McTominay, I'd give him a 4.5 for the goal. Yeah, I'd give him 4.5 for the goal. But, I mean, if you didn't see the first free kick where he's walking back and and Bruno's sc sprinting back. It's disgusting. Can we please give Bienda a chance now, says Kelvin. Well, no, Ten Hag's got to stick by his goalkeeper. He has to. Bruno probably ended up with a seven, but it could have been a nine the way he started the game. If we'd just given him the ball, I think it could have been a seven. It uh, could have been a nine. Uh, Anthony, I would give a 6.5. I thought he played well. I, I, I think some of these players, you know, I get it. I do get it. What's happening here is you've got players who are getting marked down because of the mistakes of the goalkeeper. 
How do we trust this team, says RL Gaming. Um, I, don't, I don't trust it anyway. Just a reminder, Bruno gave away both free kicks. We conceded them, says Patrick. Okay, okay. I'm, I, I, I always, I would, I've been waiting for this because I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off, so I ain't holding back on this. I've been waiting for somebody to blame, blue, blame Bruno Fernandes. So the first free kick he gives away is because he has to sprint after a misplaced pass by McTominay and makes a foul. He has to do it. If he doesn't sprint, they probably score anyway. So the first foul, you know, that's just working hard for your team. It should never go in and Arna should save it. The second foul is in an, isn't in a dangerous position. It's a crossing free kick and he lets that in. You know, blaming Bruno Fernandes for fucking free kicks when the goalkeeper may as well have been the invisible man. Come on. I think it's head to head. So we're probably finishing bottom of the group, says Dylan. Um... I don't think we can finish on the same points as Galatasaray, can we? Um, if we win... Um, if we win and they draw, we're above them. So we can't finish on the same points as Galatasaray. Unless we draw. Yeah. And then we'd be... In, yeah. We, we, we've got to beat We've got to beat Bayern Munich and hope, really. That's all we can do. Um, carrying on with the player ratings, uh, Ganacho, I'd give him a six. Um, I, I don't know why we brought him off. He was probably tired. Um, 6.5 is probably fair. I mean, what a quality goal it was. And, uh, he's always a threat. Probably just didn't get the ball to him enough. Uh, Rasmus, uh, probably 5.5, really. It's the graveyard shift again, isn't it? That, that's the problem with it. It's a, it's a graveyard shift. People say Anthony is bad for his 100 million price tag, but I think Anana has been worth relatively priced, says Mullen. Um, Maynou, uh, look, some people tried to blame him on the third goal. I've been in that position as a midfielder. He's tracking the run of the striker and it's very difficult to stop the shot going off. But I thought Maynou did quite a good thing. He used his body to push him wide. Like that that ball, the striker could have got arrowed in more straight. So May, Maynou's actually took up a decent position, pushing him wide. He can't stop the shot, but he has pushed him wide. And where he shoots from, that should never go in. That, that should never go in on the near post. It's so bad keeping. So I'd give Maynou... I think Maynou came on and did okay. I'd give him a six. Um, Martial... Probably a six. The low six. Palistri, probably a five, to be honest. Uh, could have passed it better a couple of times. Certainly should have scored as well. Anthony with probably his best game in the United shirt. Proud of these players today. Not their fault. Not the manager's fault. Sadly, only Anana to blame, says Rushel. Palestri with easy chances to win the game. Um, and then Ten Hag today. It's so difficult, isn't it? It's really difficult to... Um, give Ten Hag a score because the bigger picture is he bought an honor and let De Gea go. Um, the bigger picture is he keeps picking McTominay. But the reality is we scored three goals and the keeper made three stupid mistakes. Um, overall, team-wise, he should win that game. And if he wins that game, it's a massive win. I mean, how we've conspired to draw a game that we'd won is, is basically on keepers, isn't it? So I'm tempted to give him a five, but... Um, I do feel it's a, it's a bit harsh on him because, um, I mean, they're not direct. It's not directly. It's not. It's not like he's bought a goalkeeper knowing he's going to make three mistakes in one game. Anan is better than that. So, yeah. Obviously, I just think we should have kept the hair for another year. That's my opinion. Um, my man of the match is Bruno. What a goal! Good assist. You know, lots of effort. Um, I think he was easily man of the match. Um, and he was your man of the match as well with 54% of the boat, which I agree with. Um, I'm a little bit confused why it's disappeared from the screen. Well, that's interesting. Why is that, why is that disappeared? Oh, there it is. Um, man of the match with 54% of the vote, Bruno Fernandes, which... I agree with. Uh, I think he was man of the match. Um, um, I'm, I'm, wor I'm worried now because we've got Newcastle on Saturday. 
And I always, I mean, look, this is more for later in the week, but I, I always, I said enjoy the Everton result because it will get forgotten ridiculously quickly because of the volume of games we've got. We've got Newcastle and we've got Chelsea, Bournemouth, then Bayern Munich. There's too many games coming too quick now that the moaning after the Everton game was silly because we, you know, like I did, you should have enjoyed it because it, that Everton game's gone now. We're, we're living in the disappointment of Galatasaray. And then we've got Newcastle on Saturday night where, you know, I don't think it looks good for Newcastle. Um, uh, not for Newcastle, it doesn't look good for us. We're going to go into that game tired on a heavy pitch and we're going to be feeling vulnerable. Um, and Newcastle are going to be feeling pissed off and energetic with an extra day's rest. So that becomes very, very difficult. And we have to park the Champions League now. And that Bayern Munich game becomes another cup final. So, yeah, I think it's it's what I actually I actually did say this, though, didn't I? I said this in the international break. Everton, Galatasaray and Newcastle, I predicted we'd win one, draw one and lose one. Um and you know what that means for Newcastle on Saturday night. But look, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a really difficult one for us to come back to because as a player, I've played in those games. I'm sure you've played in games like that where you should win, but somebody's had a stinker. And you back them. You do back them because that's what you have to do. But you also privately are like, fucking hell. You know, um, Mark, you know, I love your show, but the Christmas show I can't watch from Cape Town even two or three months later on YouTube will be awesome, says Andre. We'll see what we can do, mate. We'll see what we can do. Um, anyway, look, let's get over to the fan forum. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going to want to see and hear what uh, Beth and co have got to say about the goalkeeping situation. Of course, I, I, I sympathise with Beth. I think, you know, she's not the only one that wanted to change the goalkeeper. And in the long term, it might work out. A ball playing goalkeeper is exactly what Arteta's done at Arsenal. I've got no problem with the fact that David De Gea can't play out from the back and Anana can. But did we need to do it in the summer? I don't. I think we should have waited a year. That was always what I said and I stand by it even now. I think that's exactly what we should have done. But look, let's get over and see what's to be said on there. They're live now. Um, I'm very interested to listen to it myself. I'll be back at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Speak to you later.